amazing as the heavens are, they're not made in the image of God, but you are. In fact, this is you in the womb at 11 weeks. Question, is this animal, mi mineral, vegetable, or human? Human. In fact, let's go back even further than 11 weeks. Let's go all the way back to when your mother and your father got together to conceive you. Have you guys had this talk before? I see some young people in here, so I'll try and be discreet. I also see some older people in here, so I'll try and be discreet as well, just in case you've forgotten how this works. Okay? When your mother and your father got together to conceive you, your mother unconsciously perfumed her egg to attract your father, and then your father sent the entire population of the United States. 300 million soldiers toward your mother's egg. And then there was a race. And you won! That's right! Don't let anyone ever tell you you're not special. You beat out 300 million others. You have blown away anything Michael Phelps has done. Now, seeing some of you limping here earlier makes it hard for me to believe you were the fastest soldier in the gene pool, but you were. Now, your soldier was 20 to 30 times smaller than a grain of salt, yet it contained half of the 3.5 billion letter genome, your DNA, your program that makes you you, all the letters in the right order. And your mother's egg was about the size of a period at the end of a sentence in an average book, and it contained the other half of your genome, the 3.5 billion letter software program that makes you you. And when your soldier and your egg came together, a new 100% genetic human being was created. You know, you have not received any more genetic information from this point till right now. Your genetic information has just duplicated itself. In fact, there were only four things separating you from adulthood. Time air, water, and food. Those are the same four things that separate a two-year-old from adulthood. Does this have implications on the abortion issue? Yeah, I think it does. We don't kill the two-year-old. Why do we kill the unborn child in the womb? Genetically, it's the same. You say, wait a minute, Frank, time out. You can't legislate morality. All right, no extra charge for this. This was the subject of our first book, creatively titled Legislating Morality. All laws legislate morality. All law laws declare one behavior right and the opposite behavior wrong. You can't think of a law which doesn't legislate someone's moral position. The question isn't whether or not you can legislate morality. The only question is, whose morality will you legislate? In fact, when people say to me, don't impose your morality on me, I say, why not? Would that be immoral? See, because you're imposing your morality on me right now. You're saying I ought not impose ought nots, yet you're imposing this ought not on me. Actually, the better answer is, is this. If somebody says, don't impose your morality on me, you ought to say, this isn't my morality. I didn't make this stuff up. I didn't make up the fact that murder's wrong, that rape is wrong, that abortion's wrong, that theft is wrong, that men were made for women and women were made for men. And the best way to perpetuate and stabilize society, which is the reason the government's involved in marriage to begin with, is to legally recognize that man-woman relationship over every other relationship. I didn't make any of this stuff up. This isn't my morality. This isn't your morality. This just happens to be the morality. The one Thomas Jefferson said was self-evident. The one the Apostle Paul said, the Gentiles are not the law of the law written on their hearts. Everybody knows this morality, but some people just don't like it. In fact, you, if you have a problem with the morality, you don't have a problem with me. You have a problem with the creator upon whose nature this morality is derived. 